All right, now we're just going to show some boxing. Got my son here, Gunner Nelson here. He's just going to do some real quick boxing stuff. And again, it shows that you can too, teach Thai boxing to anybody. All right. Right, so we got a little focus mitts. Literally, I just call them up and said, hey, let's come over and do some focus mitts. Then tell them what we're gonna do. All right, again, that's how simple it is. You can just get somebody, once they have the basics, you don't have to tell them, you don't have to make any elaborate plans. Simple stuff. All right, now we're just gonna show some tie pads. Kids, because they're again smaller, I have my guys do it too. You hit the corner pads, all right? Hit your knee. Hit the corner pads, hit the knee. And you can say, okay, you're gonna hit the corner pads, and then your goal is to hit the A on the knee. Okay? So jab cross and then oh, jump in, yeah, jump in. Whap, whap, man. Good. You can see how you can use those. Anything in the ring, you could have one kid, two kid, three kid, four kids in the ring. Plus you have a variety of holders. In Thailand, generally, you'll have anybody from his age all the way up to the professional fighters, sometimes all in the ring at the same time, right? And that's kind of a cool thing to see because you can now see that they all train together, play together, and what you see is that the little kids watch the bigger kids. And they see how they move, and then, Here's the difference between America and Thailand. In Thailand, they'll then see a kid with talent and they'll start to work with them and form them, all right? But the kids that don't have the talent, that aren't gonna be professional fighters, they just let them kind of just watch, but they're not really gonna train them. So again, it's kind of the, really the dog-eat-dog -dog world over there. You gotta be that professional, or the kid that's gonna be the next best fighter, that's who they're gonna work with. But once that is, they'll have the kids his age train the exact same way as the adults. And in fact, you'll see kids 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, they're all fighting full out, full tie rules, kicks, punches, knees. A lot of times they take out the elbows with the little kids, but otherwise full, full punches, kicks, knees, all right, as they're doing it because that's what they're going to be fighting. All right, now I'm gonna show one more thing and how you can work uh, focus mitts with the kid. And this is how they're usually done in Thailand. They, they work focus mitts on the little kids as opposed to uh, full out tie pads. Put in, jab cross, whack, 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 kick, whack, kick, whack, kick, whack, 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 hit, hit, whack, one, two, whack, one, two, whack, one, two, right kick, Left kick, uh, uh, right elbow, uh, right knee, uh, jab cross, kick, 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 whack, jab, uh, cross, uh, kick, uh, kick, uh, head kick, 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 head kick,
So you can see, a lot of times with the tie pads, you don't necessarily need them with the smaller kids. You can do everything with the focus mix. In fact, everybody from 170 pounds and under, I wear a belly pad and a pair of focus mitts to do everything we do tie boxing. I don't even worry about tie pads. When they start getting to be bigger, all right, 175 plus, and they can start to really thunder boom those kicks, then I have to use tie pads, all right? So again, just, uh, you can see that Gunner, who's also a, a, a wrestler, he does a lot of wrestling, probably 300 plus matches in wrestling, all right? He can come in, pretty much call him in and say, hey, we're gonna do some tie boxing. Let's see, let's just put it on film. And that's what, exactly what we did. We just called him up, he drove over here, you know, he didn't drive, all right? Mom drove him over here, and bam, he's up in the ring doing Thai boxing. And literally, I, I, don't, I don't force him to train, all right? We train at home, have some fun, we do some, some timing drills, we'll try to wrestle each other a little bit, we'll do some games, but really, it's just his training growing up has allowed him to be able to kick, punch, knee, and elbow like he does right now. And he's not forced to do it every day. He does it because, hey, it's something we can do, it's fun, and then, uh, you know, you can see it helps his soccer, it helps him, uh, and his soccer helps his kicking, all right? Tie boxing helps his wrestling, wrestling helps his tie boxing. Soccer helps his wrestling, see? And the more he runs, the more he plays, the more he does different sports, the better athlete he'll be. The better athlete he is, all right? Doing a variety of different sports, he won't get burnt out, all right? He'll have some fun with it. Because remember, and this is a key thing for parents, these kids are 10, 11 years old, and they got 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Now, they may go to college, and now it's 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 years old, all right, of super intense training. And then, by that time, if they even make it to college, so many kids are burnt out, they quit far before they ever get there, all right? So when you're, when you're building a kid up, all right, it's really important that you don't just burn him out and force him to train and do it because you want him to do it. Do it because you want her to do it. You do it because they want to do it. And then you have to coach them and you have to push them every once in a while to say, hey, let's get busy, let's do something, all right? But otherwise, it should be from their heart because if it's not from their heart, they will definitely burn out, all right? And I've seen so many great athletes who, who, it might be in any sport, but because of me, I, I see a lot in wrestling. I see a lot of burned out athletes before they ever get close to college. So that's a sad thing. So again, the goal is they train because they want to train and they do it because they have fun with it and you allow them to do different sports and pretty soon you got one heck of an athlete on your hands. And that's the number one goal, is to create a, a good athlete overall. And they'll kind of determine the sport they'll end up being best in just because you allow them to play a lot of sports. Look at a lot of the high-rated college athletes, college wrestlers, just didn't wrestle. But they played football, they played baseball, they even ran track, they even played golf. Dan Gable was a swimmer before he wrestled. And he realized he wasn't the best swimmer and people were beating him. He didn't like to be beat, so he decided to wrestle and then the legend was made. So again, don't just force your kids to do it. Do it because they want to, and then you gotta coach them and push them every once in a while just to keep them disciplined. But other than that, it's their, it's their you know, they're gonna grow up to be the athlete of the sport that they can be best in, and that's what you should want to do as well. So that's my, that's my kind of tip of the week for building kids to be champions, all right? And it's really important, it's in their heart, not in your heart alone. All right, so that was Gunnar Nelson, just whipping off some tie pads with Dad once again. Awesome. All right, bow down.